All right, guys, welcome back to another episode here on Grow the Earth, and today we're going to talk about chickens. And we're going to talk specifically about the 10 things about chickens that people may not tell you. And these are all things that we have learned through our years of raising chickens. And I know a lot of you may know me from my normal content of gardening, but this is another aspect of what we do here in our little suburban lot is we have chickens that we raise. So probably the first thing that we should talk about is, number one, you need to research what type of chickens you want. And the reason we go about it this way is because not all chickens are made the same. There are three specific type of chickens that are kind of the, what purpose they serve. You have egg layers. You have dual purpose, and you have what I call a fancy bird. There's multiple other different breeds of birds that are more of a pretty bird as far as the, the way their feathers are, or the fact that they lay multicolored eggs. You know, they lay a, a pink egg, or a green egg, or a blue egg. Now, of course, they serve three different purposes. Your egg laying birds have been bred specifically for egg production. Now, the egg production, they usually lay between an egg a day to an egg every day and a half or two days, depending. Now, this all depends on their happiness and, and all these other things. Uh, there is a trade-off, though, is an egg-laying bird, they're not going to lay that amount of eggs for very long. The second type of bird is called a dual-purpose bird, which means that you can take this bird and you can raise it specifically for you know, chicken that you're going to eat, or they're actually really good at laying eggs. The majority of what we have here on our little, uh, our little homestead per se is we have dual purpose birds. Uh, we find that they tend to lay eggs for longer, and um, you know they're just going to be a, yeah, a more robust kind of bird. Um, we don't have any of what I call fancy birds because the purpose for us having birds is to have eggs and we want that to you know, be as productive as possible without actually causing any kind of harm to the bird. Um, and that's you know, one of the things you need to look out for. Uh, your egg laying birds, the ones that are strictly made for production, uh, they usually have a shorter lifespan they, uh, what I call, egg out faster, and they uh, are also, they, have tend, they tend to have more physical issues uh, with, uh, as far as their reproductive parts. Um, they get egg bound more, and uh, they also tend to, to have issues with actually producing those eggs because they have been bred to do nothing but make eggs. Um, Another thing that is, is kind of along in this same realm of doing your research on your birds is your heat tolerance and your cold tolerance. Even most birds that are considered heat tolerant don't do well down here in southeast Texas. Uh, the heat is here is just stifling and in certain ways we have to take certain uh, measures to make sure that our birds are fine whenever the temperature is reaching to 100 degrees. Um, because, you know, you've got a, an animal that has a bunch of feathers all over it. Now, on the reverse side of this, you have other birds that are more cold tolerant. Um, and those are going to tend to be birds that have a, a thicker down layer underneath their feathers. And so depending on where you are in the great United States, one of those two is going to be more important to you. You know, do I need a bird that's going to tolerate the cold because we get down to, you know, negative 30? Or do I need to worry about a bird that's going to be more heat tolerant because it is going to get to 100 degrees, you know, for most of the summer? So that's something that, that uh, you know, you need to kind of research for yourself as to which type of birds are going to be best for your environment is just because your local big box store, and when I say your big box store, I'm talking about uh, here in Texas, we have a tractor supply. I know that uh, 
Uh, we also have uh, Steinhausers down here in Texas. It's more of a local place, but they have a lot of locations, so I consider them kind of a big box store. Um, because those stores are not buying the birds that are going to necessarily be best for your area. Um, you have some guy sitting up in a corporate office who is buying birds from a large chicken farm, and they're going to be what they can get the best price on, and because they get better prices on quantity. so he's going to pretty much buy the same bird for Texas as he is for Washington. Uh, so again, do your research on the type of birds, not just because they're offered in your area at a local big box store, doesn't mean that they're gonna do well in your area. Uh, you can kind of stave off a lot of this research per se, if you go to a local grower who actually has their chickens that they grow in the area and that they sell in the area because they're going to know which ones are going to be better for you know the area they're, they're going to know which ones they're going to be very knowledgeable on what type of bird that you're looking for once you tell them what you're looking you know hey i'm looking for a bird who's going to make good eggs and is not going to you know be egged out in two years and they're gonna know, okay, well, you want this type of bird. They do well in the heat, they do well in this area, they're gonna lay eggs for you for quite a long time. And you know, you're gonna have you're gonna be more informed by going to your local grower who's gonna grow those birds. Our third thing that we're gonna talk about right now is going to be shade. All of your birds are gonna need shade and they're gonna need sun. But if you look like we're down here in southeast Texas. Shade is probably a bigger need than sun because these birds are going to get hot and they've got to get an area to cool off. Uh, and typically, uh, you know, like we have a, a bucket of water back here to let them get some water while they're in the shade. That way they don't have to go to where the coop is to get that shade. So uh, definitely they need shaded areas and they need sunny areas because they're going to serve different purposes um, and they're going to serve different purposes at different times of year. Um, this also kind of goes along with our fourth thing, and that is going to be, they are going to need an area to dirt bath. Now, I will tell you, if you don't make them an area to dirt bath, they're going to make it themselves. And that will include tearing up your lawn or any number of other things. They're going to find an area to do a dirt bath in. Now, this works... Uh, Chickens have done this for centuries. It's part of their natural mechanism to guard against pests that actually get on them. We're gonna discuss that in a little bit later. Um, and also they, uh, they do this because it kind of helps them cool off because they're gonna basically dig a little, a little uh, area into the ground. They're going to lay in it and they're going to throw that dirt up on them. Uh, it's kind of a funny thing to watch because they'll actually lay there and they kind of fa you know, flare out their, their wings and then they start kicking this dirt with their wings up on themselves. Um, and you'll also find them kind of splayed out. They almost look like they're dead whenever they're laying there. Uh, we call it dead chicken because they're pulling a dead chicken because they'll be laying on their side with one leg kicked out and they'll have the other you know, their other wing kind of laid back behind them and it's, it's just an odd thing to see for the first time when you come out and look at your chickens who are dirt bathing. The fifth thing goes into when you're buying your chickens. Now, if you're going to your local big box place, more than likely you're only gonna see hatchlings, little baby chickens that you're gonna put a, have to put a lot of time and effort into, into bringing them to the point to where they're gonna lay eggs because most chickens are not gonna lay eggs until they're about six weeks old. Now, that doesn't sound like a lot of time, but there's a lot of care and a lot of feed and a lot of things that go into that to get them to that point to where they're gonna start laying eggs. And we also have to realize whenever you're buying hatchlings like that, not every hatchling is going to make it through the process of from a baby chicken to laying eggs. Uh, more often than not, if you're buying seven, eight chickens, you're probably going to lose one. It's just a fact of the matter of between genetics and between, you know, the environment they're being raised in, it happens. Um, 
So whenever you're buying chickens, if you go to a local place that has a bunch of chickens, a lot of times they have some that have not sold up and until the point to where they reach more, you know, uh, an older age. Uh, typically, you know, our first batch of chickens here, we did here, we raised chicks that we bought at the store. And to be honest with you, since then we have cycled our chickens out and we haven't bought baby chicks since. It's a lot of uh, effort and we have a local place here that we can buy chickens from that are three, four, even six weeks old. And we don't have to go through that process that hassle all the extra equipment, all the different feed and all that kind of stuff. And the, the sixth thing that we're gonna talk about is, is your actual feed. Uh, just because you're buying laying hens does not mean that they need layer feed from the day that you buy them. Uh, if you have baby chicks, they need to be on starter feed or they need to be on broiler feed. Actually feeding them laying feed too early into their life can actually cause them harm. Um, it actually brings up another thing of when is it time to switch over from your starter feed or your broiler feed into a, into a laying hen feed. And it's really, I would say it's kind of easy to figure out as to when they're going to be ready to lay because whenever you get near a chicken, if you can put your hand over the top of them, they will squat down. If they squat down, that means two things. Either they are very close to laying or they are already laying eggs. A normal chicken who is not of laying age will basically run away from you or will just stand there and wait for you to basically pet them. So if you see your, your chicken starting to squat that you have raised from a chick, then that point right there is probably the time that you need to start switching over to a laying feed because they're going to be laying in the near future. Or if you're buying an unknown age of a bird, simply check, do they squat? If they squat, they're already laying, we can go straight to a laying feed and we're good to go. Well, let's talk about our seventh thing is, and that is the environment. Are you going to have your chickens caged the whole time? Or are you going to let them free range? Now, I will say to you that if you're going to keep your chickens cooped up, make sure they have more than ample room to move around and get away from each other. You will have chickens that are going to try and fight and and uh, deal with each other because there is a hierarchy to your chicken brood. The, the, the different chickens, they all have a place within that hierarchy and there's going to be one chicken that's gonna be the, the big mama hen and you have the one that's gonna be at the bottom of the totem pole that's gonna get picked on and is gonna get shooed away from food and so forth. It's just the nature of the beast. If you see a couple of chickens fighting, more than likely, unless it becomes a real problem to where they're getting picked on repeatedly, you just need to let it happen because they're finding their place, they're trying to move up within the hierarchy, they're getting pushed down within the hierarchy, it just kind of depends on what chicken you're looking at, but that's something that is going to have to happen, or otherwise, you're going to have kind of resentment because one is getting treated different than the other one. Uh, and that is something that will happen. Uh, it'll happen with chickens, with dogs, with cats, the whole nine yards. All right, so our eighth thing is, this goes along with, you know, if you're gonna free range your chickens or if you're gonna keep them cooked up all the time. If you're gonna free range your chickens, one of the things you need to keep in mind is the fact that they will dig around trees. What I mean by that is right here at the base of the tree, they will dig out around the roots. Uh, a little further over that way, we used to have a full size, I mean like a very large citrus tree, uh, an orange tree to be exact. And they had dug out around it so much that I actually had to start coordinating that area off because it was actually starting to harm the tree. Uh, now I'm sure that they were digging it uh, around it to dirt bathe in uh, for security from hawks and so forth. And also it's just a cooler area. You know, if you're down by the roots of this tree, you're in the dirt, so it's cooler. You're underneath shade, so it's cooler. It was just an area that they really liked and they would dig holes around it. 
but it came to the point to where it started harming our, harming our tree. So if you've got some trees in your area that you're uh, worried about them co possibly causing harm to, make sure that's not in the area that you're letting them free range. Um, definitely, uh, if you're kind of uh, the, the same thing as far as coordinating off an area uh, for them to be in, because uh, just to be honest, they, uh, they defecate a lot. Uh, so if you are giving them up to, you know, you've got them in your backyard and you don't have an area cordoned off, just be mindful that you're going to see a lot of chicken poop in your backyard. So if you kind of give them an area to inhabit, then you, you know what you're dealing with going into the area and it's not your whole backyard or it's not everywhere that you may be. Now our ninth thing that we're going to talk about is chickens and the fact that um, if you're a little squeamish about what chickens might eat, you're you're going to uh, you're going to have some surprises. Now chickens are omnivores, meaning they will eat grass, they will eat meat. It, it doesn't matter; they eat anything. They're they're like a little baby raptor, okay. Um, if there are any bugs, if there are any butterflies, if there are any dragonflies, if there are any lizards, uh, baby birds uh, is a one that was pretty awesome that we didn't realize that they would eat. Um, they will eat all of that and they will chase it down and, and eat it. They're, um, they are very voracious whenever it comes to things like that. Um, We've actually had a couple of toads that uh, fell victim to our, our chickens. Uh, like I said, a baby bird. Uh, many small little uh, lizards and geckos. They weren't quite quick enough to get back up the wall. Um, so if you're at all squeamish about seeing an animal eat another animal, <laughs> you might want to steer clear of chickens because they will eat most anything that they can get a hold of and they just will... Um, yeah, so if, if you have a herd of, a, a, a brood of chickens and you look out the back or you look towards them and you have one that is running and all the rest of them following it, they probably got one of those things. They probably got a, a, a lizard or a, um, or a toad or one of those things that the other ones want. So the tenth thing that we're going to talk about is pest. Chickens have about three different major kind of pests that can get on their body and can actually cause them quite a bit of harm. Those are fleas, ticks, and mites. Now, we have dealt with fleas and we have dealt with mites. We've never dealt with any, dealt with any ticks here, but all of these pests, if not kept in check and not taken care of, can cause a lot of different ailments with your chickens. And it may not be evident they have these things or these pests until you see some of these things happening. Uh, they'll get scale leg, they'll get, uh, they'll start losing weight. They can actually come to the point of dying because of certain things, certain uh, other diseases they can get from these pests. Now, your dirt bath is where some of that is going to come in. That's going to help them keep some of these pests in check. The sunlight is going to do the same thing. Um, and some of it is going to come down to your own remedies to help them along with those things. And that is um, a free-ranging flock is not going to be as susceptible to these things because they have all these other mechanisms that they can lean on. Uh, but if you have a caged flock, a flock that spends most of their time inside of a, a chicken coop, inside of a, a run, then these are going to be more things that you're going to have to keep an eye on. You need to check your chickens and make sure that they don't have these things. Now, I'll leave you to your own research on what those actually look like and what remedies you can take, because there's actually a number of not only remedies that you can buy at the store, as far as, you know, uh, chemical things to treat that, but also there's quite a few home remedies. Now if I see a lot of interest in this video, 
I'm going to make another video as far as home remedies for these things that can affect your flock. And uh, I'd like for you to let me know that those uh, are, this is something that you want to see. Now, one thing that I was not told about, and this is kind of a bonus thing uh, that I didn't get to really touch on in our 10 things. I kind of talked about it, but I didn't really say it. And that is that every bird has a egg laying span. With certain breeds, it's longer than others. Most of your egg laying breeds is roughly two and a half to three years. On most dual purpose birds, it's going to be closer to four to five years. And what I mean by that is that their, their actual egg production is going to slow down to the point to where eventually they're going to stop laying eggs. This is why you need to have your flock in rotation because you either need to say, okay, well, those are the older birds, they're going to be here, but we just don't expect any eggs out of them, or we need to slaughter those birds and bring in some new birds that are going to take over egg production. It's just a matter of, you know, matter of having chickens and their life cycle and the things that happen whenever you have chickens. Um, unfortunately, like in your, um, in your egg laying industry, uh, those chickens are, now something that I, I kept alluding to within this video, but I never actually talked about was a chicken egging out. What I mean by that is, is the chickens, depending on their breed, have got a certain amount of years that they will produce eggs. Now, depending on the breed, egg laying, you know, breeds specifically made for egg laying, have got about two to two and a half years to where they're going to produce eggs consistently until they start tapering off to a point to where they just stop laying eggs altogether. Your dual purpose birds are going to lay for four to five years, and then after that they're gonna start tapering off again until they just stop producing. Uh, I can't speak to the other varieties of birds, you know, the, the fancier birds, the ones that laid the colored eggs, because I'm, not, I'm just not familiar with them. We don't raise them, we raise our chickens to, to make eggs. And what that means is either you've gotta do one of two things, either you have to call those uh, birds out of your flock, or you just have to concede the fact that, you know, hey, they're a part of the flock, but they're just not going to produce any eggs for me. Um, the typical lifespan of a chicken, no matter what breed, uh, on the high end is seven, eight years. On the low end is three and a half to four years, depending on the breed. So that's something that you need to protect, prepare yourself for as an owner of chickens, you know, as somebody who has chickens for eggs or whatever your purpose is for. Now, the better way to get the most bang out of your chickens is a happy bird is a laying bird. So during the summer months when it gets hot, they're probably going to have a little more stress on them and they're going to reduce production if you get into the hundreds like we do. Um, if you're uh, in the, the colder climates and you add supplemental light, eventually those birds are going to go through their time, which they would consider winter to where they do not uh, produce eggs because the chicken's life cycle is based on their lighting. They have times when they lay eggs because they're laying eggs in spring and in summer to have their chicks before the fall and the winter. And that is all done off of sunlight. So if you add supplemental light, they're still going to have that time to where they're gonna go off time and not lay as many eggs, but you're just pushing that time out and also you're running your chickens out of eggs faster. So, you know, that's something to keep in mind. That's something to, to um, you know, ponder about. If you've had really, really good laying chickens and then all of a sudden they stop laying, we need to look at their environment. You know, is it getting hotter? Is it getting cooler? Is there uh, something around us that has changed? Is the, the neighbor starting to build on in addition to his house and has a lot of construction around? To where the noise has increased? Um, did the city come through and put a, you know, a bigger road by your house, which is making more traffic? 
you know, all of these things can play into whether or not that chicken is going to lay eggs and whether or not it's going to be happy and lay good eggs for you. So guys, I appreciate your time. I appreciate you coming and, and spending time with me. And as always, I ask you to pray over your family, pray over your chickens, and have a great day.